earlier today we deployed our web app to Streamlit sharing. In other words, we uploaded our project files to the Streamlit servers. Now, this kind of deployment option was done in this Streamlit sharing integrated platform. So this is some sort of platform which is tied to a particular technology. So this platform in this case is only available for Streamlit apps. The process, the deployment process was very easy, but it is very limited. So you have limitations such as your app will sleep seven days after no visits are made on your website. And also, if you have lots of visits, that could also be a problem because the servers of Streamlit sharing might not be able to handle all those requests. That's why in this video, I want to introduce you to more powerful deployment options. And then we will choose the best of those deployment options and we will deploy our app using that deployment option. So by the end of this video, you also have your app deployed somewhere else. Let's go with the second option. Platform as a service, also known for short as PAS. And some platforms, some good platforms to mention are Heroku, Python Anywhere, Google App Engine and AWS. So these are services and we are going to use Heroku in this video. So we're going to deploy our app to Heroku so you'll understand exactly what a PAS is. Basically, they have servers which they offer to you through a web interface. So it allows you to use those servers in an easy fashion. That means you don't have to think about admin operations. So you don't have to maintain those servers. So that means you can focus on development, you can focus on coding and maintaining your code base because you are a programmer, so you want to spend your time on what you do best. And PAS are usually the best option. And I'll try to compare them with other options. So the next option is IAS, Infrastructure as a Service. These are also services, they allow you to use their servers but the interface is a bit harder to use. IAS services tend to have more flexibility and they also tend to be cheaper than PAS. However, again, with PAS, you focus on development. You don't have to think about maintaining these operating systems. Now, with IAS, all you have to do, though, is maintain the operating system. But with physical servers, which is the other next option, you have to maintain the operating system, but also the physical servers themselves. For example, I used to work in a company which managed GPS data, lots of them. And the company, we had these physical servers in a room. And one day the power went off. And even though the servers had backup power, the room cooling system itself didn't have backup power. Therefore, the cooling system went off and therefore the servers became very hot. They had to turn off automatically. So that makes this option the hardest because you have to maintain the physical components of those servers. And these ones in here, you don't have to think about anything physical. AWS offers both PAS and IAS, although I do recommend to use DigitalOcean if you go for IAS because they have a better pricing system. A friend of mine who has a AI company for agriculture, he had to pay 20k overnight because a hacker was able to hack to his AWS and they loaded some heavy processes which consumed a lot of resources. So my friend had to pay for those resources that he consumed to Amazon. So AWS is part of Amazon. In conclusion, I do recommend PAS and now we're going to use Heroku. So let's go over to our PyCharm project. So that's my to-do app, the web app, and we are going to deploy it on Heroku. Now, if you go to your browser and you go to the heroku.com website and then you want to sign up for an account and then you want to log in with that username and password and you're going to see this dashboard on the main page. So just here on Heroku, you want to create a new app and you can create up to five apps for free. Otherwise, you would have to pay. So you would have to enroll to one of the plans but for free, you get to use five apps. So let's create a new app. Name it whatever you want, like to do app and choose a region. 
Oh, to do app is not available, so let's try my to do app 10. Yeah, that's available. So think about a name because that is going to be the name on the public URL. Your URL is going to be something like my to do app 10 dot heroku app dot com. More about that later. Now the region here specifies the region where your app will be stored, will be served. So the files are going to be uploaded somewhere. So Heroku does have servers in United States and Europe. Now, if you expect that most of your users would be in United States, then it makes sense to choose United States here because that means your app will be served slightly faster to those users in United States and maybe a bit slower for European users. Uh, but if you expect to have users from both United States and India, perhaps Europe is a better option. It would be like a good middle ground because it's between United States and India. So I'll choose Europe and press on create app. Now we have these three options to deploy our app. One is Heroku Git and the preferred method for me and for many programmers is GitHub. So with GitHub, when you click here for the first time, you will get a window perhaps, which is asking you to log into GitHub to authenticate yourself so that Heroku has access to your repository. So down here now, after I have authenticated myself, I've logged into GitHub, I can search for repository names of my GitHub account. So here I have this my to do repository. I can search for it. Yeah, that's my repository. So I can press connect. Now, if you don't have a repository, that means you didn't follow me in the previous videos when we created a repository in the previous days. So if that's the case, if you don't have a repository, so that's my repository. If you don't have one, you need to create one in here, new repository. And then you want to go to your project and make sure that the repository is in manage remotes. So this is the repository in my case. So that file is in here. So I go over in here and I want to connect this repository, which is where my project is in GitHub. And it says connected. The next option is asking you if you want to enable automatic deploys. What is an automatic deployment? Well, let's say that you are developing your program. So perhaps you add a new feature, you add some code here. And then if you commit your code to Git, and then if you push your code to GitHub, then Heroku is going to get the GitHub changes automatically. So once you, you push your code to GitHub, your app will be updated. So users will see the updated version of your app, will see the new feature that you added. So I do recommend to enable automatic deploys. And then don't press this deploy branch button just yet because we need to go to our project here and we need to add some configuration files. So in my computer here, I have these two files, proc file and setup.sh file. You can find these two files attached in the lecture resources in this lecture. So please copy those files and paste them in the directory where your Python files are, which normally is the root directory. So I'll click here and go to paste and press OK. And then this will ask you if you want to add the files to git press add. If it didn't ask you, then you want to select the files, that file and that one, and right click and then go to git and go to add to add them manually. Now let me explain you what these two files are for. Let's start with setup.sh. This is a shell script. So it has three parts actually. This one here is a command which will create a directory. So all actually are commands and these commands are going to be executed on the server, on the Heroku servers. So we will upload these to GitHub as well and then Heroku will get those two files. So this will create a new directory and then 
in here we specify the email if you want you can change this to your own email address but that doesn't matter so you can leave it here i'll just leave it like that then in here we create a credentials.toml file this is just a text file where we're going to store that email address so that is going to be created inside of this folder which was created up here so linux which is the operating system of the server that Heroku uses will run this command so it will create files and folders and then in here we specify the port you don't have to think about that either and then we write those in this other configuration file as well so those are written in that configuration file and those here are written in that configuration file that's about this sh file and then proc file so don't change the names of these files this is very important proc file has to be with a capital p so it is just a file without any extension mm, this now tells heroku how to run our web app so what this will do actually is it will first execute this setup.sh file and this file will execute these as i explained and then we will execute the streamlit run web.py command which is the same command that i used to execute here when i want to run my app now be careful here in my case my main file which is the file i run which is this one is named web.py so if your file is named differently you want to change that to the name of your file lastly there's another file you need and that is the requirements.txt file we did create this file earlier so i showed you how to generate this file so if you don't have that file again you can generate it with pip freeze requirements.txt however before you execute this you should first install streamlit with pip install streamlit if you haven't done so yet so i have installed both streamlit as you can see i don't have a red underline under streamlit so streamlit is installed requirements.txt is here so all these packages now are going to be installed by the server by the heroku server so heroku needs these three configuration files and also the actual python files and maybe associated txt files such as to do txt so let's now commit the changes which is this proc file the setup.sh file and perhaps in my case this is the to do txt file perhaps in your case this is not listed here anyway it's fine it is important that proc file and setup.sh are here so you want to say here add files add configuration files and commit then you want to push the changes to github so that is going to upload these three files to my github repository so if i refresh this page now we're going to see that proc file and setup.sh are here then i can go back to heroku and then i can finally deploy the branch now this is the name of the branches master you can see here as well it's master so they have to be the same branches just before you deploy though you want to make sure the app is running smoothly so perhaps it's a good idea to do streamlit run web.py and see if the app is fine it looks fine so now we're ready to finally press that deploy branch button and you should see now the logs of the server so the server is, is now deploying your app it says that a python app was detected so heroku is a platform as a service it supports different programming languages python is one of them now you see here installing requirements with pip so heroku found that requirements.txt file and it is installing all those packages using pip so pip is installed in the heroku servers so now pip installs those requirements proc file declares the types so this is a web app you remember that web in here that one and then we have more it's compressing packages 
Now it's launching and released version 4. So that's the path to my app. Now you can copy that path, go to a browser tab, and if you try to refresh, perhaps the first time it doesn't show up, so try to refresh after a few seconds. And now this is my app. So I can add new to-dos and I can complete them. And that was how to deploy web apps on Heroku. That is a public URL, so you can give it to anyone and they can use it. If your app will become very popular, then Heroku might send you an email telling you that the resources are being exceeded, so you might have to upgrade to a paid plan on Heroku, which gives you more resources such as CPU and RAM, so your apps can handle more traffic. Yeah, with that, thanks a lot, and I'll see you later.